Hello everybody, welcome back to the Our Furry Art School Discord group study. My name is Iothisk, and today our topic is going to be the five basic perceptual skills of drawing. Now, I mostly lifted this uh, material from the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. I'll probably leave a link in the description of the YouTube video uh, to like an Amazon page where you can buy it. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's a pretty comprehensive guide to basic drawing. Um, and it approaches things in a way, uh, in a, in a rather unique way, rather than saying like, oh, here, look at this, draw this, you know, it offers a, a bit more, um, depth and understanding as to why you're doing certain things, um, and uh, and uh, it takes an approach that uh, that pays, that's based a little bit in in neuroscience. There's some old there's some older topics in here. Uh, like I said, the book the book's title is Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, and as that may imply, uh, it's it's focusing on like the the right left brain kind of duality. Like right brain is uh, creative, left brain is uh, logical, type of stuff like that. Um, which is not 100% scientifically accurate, but what it represents in the book is more like a, a division along the lines of like uh, what uh, the division is more <clears throat> conceptual rather than a literal interpretation of having like one side of your brain is this way, and the other side of your brain is this way. Of course, that's not true 100% of the time. But yeah, brains, they're interesting, right? Anyway, so let's go ahead and get going. The, the, the five... The five... Basic... Perceptual... Skills of drawing. All right, feel free to take notes. We're going to take this kind of like one topic at a time, um, and they're in kind of an order. Um, this isn't necessarily like a hard and, and fast order, but if you do each each uh, each topic, kind of builds on the one that came before it. So we'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and outline these right now. The first one is lines and edges. Second one is spaces. The third one is relationships. Fourth one is light and shadow. Yeah, that's way too much W. And the fifth one is Gestalt. It's a German word meaning the whole thing. And we'll uh, we'll each of these is uh, is unique in its own way. Uh, and each of these, like, I'll, I'll be using, like, the artist terminology here. Uh, if you ever fall behind on something, I can, I can explain it real quick. But, uh, lines and, lines and edges, whenever we're talking about those, like, we're talking about drawing lines, professional lines. There. I want to make sure that you put a dot after a line that makes it a professional line. Um, I'm just joking there. But, uh, lines and edges build up to spaces. Spaces... Uh, exist in relationship to each other, as well as lines and edges exist in relationship to each other to make spaces. Light and shadow are what create form, uh, for, uh, or rather what create uh, deep form, or one of the things that create deep form. Relationships can create a form of their own as well. And I'll show you a bit of that. Uh, light and shadow... I kind of have to pull up some more resources on that, so I might be pulling up some resources for that on the fly. 
Um, but yeah, so that will be one of our break areas. And then Gestalt is the, the, the idea of the whole, the entire image, how it all comes together. Um, yeah, basically you're, how does, how does the whole thing fit into one thing? How does it, how does it make a complete one thing? The, the oneness of an image. Uh, and this is, this is one of those things that, like, um, Betty Edwards says like it can't really it can't really be be taught it just kind of emerges from when you have these four foundational principles which I kind of agree with but there are um, there are other approaches to, to gestalt and um, what's another way I can put it I can say and composition composition because composition relates to how an entire thing is uh, is built as well, from its foundations to its details. All right. So first off, um, an exercise, one that involves a little bit of an optical illusion, and you're probably familiar with this, and it shouldn't hurt your brain too much. But I'm going to turn on this optical illusion, the vase faces illusion. And I'm going to use this to talk a little bit about, to, to kind of preamble what I wrote on the, on the whiteboard. So two, two psychological concepts, right? Uh, we've got sensation and we've got perception. So we've got sensation and perception. And you can think of sensation as kind of like the mechanical uh, viewing of a thing. Um, it's it's optics. It's light literally enters your eye and hits the back of your eyeball uh, and creates an image. That's sensation. And perception is giving meaning to that image. So when we're looking at this particular optical illusion, we are perceiving things. We're perceiving the shape of a face, right? Because this is we're we're very familiar with faces. Human beings are very familiar with faces, uh, and this will tie back to to furry art and art in general. But we're very familiar with the shape of human faces, and so when we see a face, we'll be like, "Oh, yeah, that's super cool. It's a face." Um, in this stark contrast here, our perception can uh, suddenly swap out and shift and we'll see this kind of like grand vase shape and what's happening here is that we are our brain can sometimes have difficulty uh, deciphering what is the thing and what is the space around it in these uh, in these stark black and white images right so if you're seeing the faces you're seeing the blackness as a background this is the space surrounding the two faces that are very close to each other. However, if you if you see the vase or the vase or whatever, uh, you're seeing these big white spaces as spaces, and these are kind of kind of going to be a background a background to this this thing, right? So the black is the thing in one sense of perception, and the white is the thing in another sense of perception. And if you want to kind of challenge yourself. Um, challenge your brain to to get into like a drawing mode uh, a good way of doing that is trying to replicate this this image so like if I go back to the whiteboard here and try to replicate the vases what you might do if you're right-handed like me you can start from the top and kind of draw a head it's gonna have a brow and a nose Nose will come out, and then there will be an upper lip, and then there will be a bottom lip, and then there will come out a chin. And we'll try and do this in like one continuous line type of thing. But if I'm doing this, and I come to the opposite end, you can kind of start to struggle. Like, you'll notice that I'm slowing down my speech and that's because I'm switching modes here of of thinking Betty Edwards might call this like a, a right to left switch or uh, excuse me a left to right switch 
But the thing about doing that uh, is it kind of opens up your, your mind to some things. And I didn't get this perfect, obviously. But um, the, the important part is to recognize what's happening to your mind as you're doing this. I recommend it as an exercise. So just kind of have it as, as, a, as a reference. You know, have this, have this thing open as a reference. Um, but yeah, so... just going to remove that for now. But yeah, so there's some sensation and, and perception, and we can also kind of transition into, like, lines, right? Because we can see that, oh, there's, like, an obvious line here. You know, lines, they, they, they exist. They exist in art. They exist in, in uh, real life sometimes. If we've, like, built a solid thing as a barrier, you know, that can be considered a line. But for the most part, lines are kind of uh, perceptual constructs, right? Like, you can you can have a literal thing be a line, but lines, the, the lines on, like, a human face, there's no lines on a human face, really. We just kind of see the, the outlines, the, the, the contours, in this sense. The contour of a thing is its very outside shape. Uh, it can also be called, like, its silhouette or something like that. Um, but yeah, so that introduces us to, to that. So, um, I'll talk a little bit more about lines later, but I want to talk a bit more about, uh, faces and the way that we, the way that we recognize faces, all right? So I'm going to show you guys a famous image, and it will show really quick, so make sure that you're paying attention to this part. Ready? I'm going to show you this face. Three, two, one. Did you catch it? Who was that? <laughs> Hi. Did you see the stream? I showed a picture. Who saw the picture? You can type it in the chat. No worries, you're free to unmute too. Anyone see who that was? <laughs> <laughs> good job, good job. Some of you might have taken longer than normal. So, like, here's the, here's the image there, and looking at it upside down, like, whoa, it's just kind of weird, isn't it? Like staring at this uh, upside down, like we've got uh, the kind of like uh, logic part of our brain trying to say, like, okay, well, what is ex what is this thing that I'm looking at? Uh, and then you know you've got. Um, You've got kind of a, a creative uh, uh, side can look at this as, as well and see like, oh, okay, well, look at all of these interesting kind of shapes, and maybe I don't recognize this as a face immediately off the bat. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's cool looking, and so I don't inspire seasickness in people. I'll go ahead and flip that right side up for you. But yeah, that's Neil deGrasse Tyson. And so, like, you can... Uh, you can pull faces of celebrities, and they're they're great to uh, practice drawing. So yeah. All right. I'm gonna go into lines now. So right here, I've got just some like straight horizontal lines, and they're kind of boring, right? But the the lines can can affect. Uh, how we how we see a thing like right now they kind of look like prison bars or like a referee shirt or something like that and it doesn't necessarily have to uh, have those connotations necessarily but there are things that we can do to kind of play around with them too so like for example if I select them And I do a bit of free transform magic. I can start altering their shape so that they start leading somewhere. And then this thing starts to look like... Whoa, this line is indicative of like a space, right? Because it's re receding into the distance in, like, perspective, kind of. Let me lower that down. 
can go back and it can like these are going to converge and vanish to a point and this you know like I said it's just it's just lines not doing anything particularly special here I'm just making sure that the uh, I'm just transforming them awkwardly and kind of making an easy uh, sense of space this way or a sense of form of, of depth this way but yeah so that's how that's how lines can uh, the relationships of these lines again I'm jumping a bit forward here but the relationships of these lines implies space or form of some sort right uh, so you've got lines and you've got lines that can make shapes let me go ahead and open this I'm not gonna alter that for now but I am going to turn this off and so here we've got a set of hands right this is an image I pulled off the internet it's not it's not mine uh, but it was labeled for re non-commercial reuse so I'm going to reuse it uh, but we so we can see that there are various types of lines in this right and they they pay careful attention to to each other and it's it's not just it's not just the lines right so like if I zoom in on like any particular piece you know we can say like oh that's you know it seems like a big bunch of scribbles right um, but again returning to that idea of relationships oh wait these are similar forms they're kind of overlapping each other there's something going on here wait there's more overlap this is oh wait it's a finger overlapping a finger and if we see the whole image our brain is just like oh that's a set of hands clasped together right fairly fairly simple but it's it's the it's the component lines that make uh, contours right and the relationship of the outside contours to the inner lines starts giving us a sense of form that we re eventually recognize as hands so that's an important uh, perceptual shift to uh, to attempt but yeah so I can return to so this is a perspective drawing I made a long while back and this is doing um, kind of kind of similar things right each of these lines by themselves is not necessarily super interesting right like if I'm zoomed way in it's just kind of like oh a bunch of lines connecting right but if I make an entire image where all of the lines relationships to each other can assemble a larger meaning well then I've got a picture of a city which can be pretty cool but yeah so returning back to the whiteboard a little bit lines and edges of things we can cover kind of edges and, and contours spaces I can return to I can return to this actually and kind of show you something about spaces oh if my computer has not completely frozen up shoot something happened wait can you guys still hear me okay good sorry I thought I lost you there my computer froze did the stream do something funny <laughs> okay good okay good sorry I went silent there um, but yeah I can return to to this image right here to kind of talk about uh, spaces anytime we've got uh, an enclosed area so like we've got the the white ends at the border of the image right and so we can say that this face shape is indeed a shape so like it's its outline its contour is going to be the literal lines along the profile of the face itself and the lines of the canvas and same with the vase so like we've got a shape here a shape here a shape here and the way they're all put in the way they're all put in relationship to each other we can see that there's a relationship of symmetry for example right 
and we and we kind of inherently know the relationship of like oh face this is a face and so we see it that way but yeah so lines and edges spaces relationships the relationship so another thing to to talk about with uh with relationships uh let's go back to let's go back to neil degrasse tyson here for a moment Let me turn the opacity on him down just a little bit so it's like a little bit lighter. So I can kind of overlay shapes onto it, right? So we've got like the, the human head, and I've talked about this in uh, other videos on my YouTube channel. You can kind of see. But the human head broadly can fit into a form that is roughly a square grid, right? Of like two by three. This is a relationship, right? So we've got two, two cubes next to each other stacked in three. Or we've got two stacks of three, however you want to think about it. Uh, but this is a relationship that you can, that you can find. And you can also find like the, the, there's, there's a relationship into how the, the eyebrows and the ears kind of align, or how the bottom of the nose and the ears kind of align. It looks like this is kind of a down shot here, so it's not a, a perfect straight on view. But um, the, the, this is again a, a kind of, this is kind of a logical relationship, whereas if we flip to the upside down version, I'll turn that one down a bit too. Yeah, I'll move this so that it kind of fits again. And this is another nifty trick that you can uh, you can kind of unlock uh, a more creative way of viewing things. Um, it, it might inspire some like confusion or frustration. Totally natural. Bear with it. You know, just just grind through that frustration. And eventually your, you know, the, the, the side of your brain that deals with, like, uh, symbols and, and language and so forth will eventually kind of kind of shut off, right? Because it gets bored, because it can't label all of these unfamiliar things now that you've flipped it upside down. But you can recognize that there's a jawline shape, got a neck coming up. Got kind of the the dome of the cranium, and then we've got kind of a kind of a jawline going on here, right? If his chin's here, his jaw's going to be back here, connected to the ear. And again, I'm kind of blending a couple of uh, perceptual things here, right? Because I can see. I can see that, yes, it's literally a face, but when it's upside down like this, I can break it down more into, like, okay, the forms, the shapes, you know, what exactly is the shape of his nose and of his eyes. Like, the nose right in this in this example does not come down straight down from the corner of the eye or from the bottom of the eyelid, but the eye, but the bottom of the eyelid does still trace a path to the corner of the mouth. more or less. But yeah, these are these are relationships um, that that you can see in a person and it, and you can kind of help uh, help yourself discover them uh, with with tools and tricks like flipping something upside down or drawing a grid over it or um, zooming in on it real close to kind of eliminate some of the noise. Sometimes images can be really noisy, right? And so if what if I wanted to like come in here like right on the eye? And study the eye a little bit and so like okay we're gonna have a shape curling up here right and it kind of overlaps this other part coming down and this is a way that you can kind of like uh, learn learn via tracing um, because that's what I'm that's what I'm doing here but if as long as you're paying attention to like the the, the forms and the shapes like um, you can be you can be direct tracing like this, but you can also be referencing. 
So doesn't doesn't necessarily matter one way or the other. If you're practicing on a celebrity face, it's a celebrity face, you know? They're neat to draw. They're neat to study. But yeah. All right. So returning to uh, light and shadow. The only real uh, yeah. So we we go we we come back to we can come back to Neil here to kind of uh, observe some things about light and shadow. Right. Let me bump that intensity back up. We can see Neil is on like a, a lit stage of some sort, right? And so we can see very, very bright spaces, like the lapel here of his shirt. That's catching a ton of light. It's, it's pure white, almost, in some spaces. And then opposed to like the, the inside shirt is going to be pure black here. So this image has like a lot of contrast. So there's there's the pure white, the pure black, and actually I can I can throw something over this. This is another neat trick that you can do, is create a a correction layer, and there will be various ways of doing this depending on your program. But in Clip Studio, you can do uh, you can do a hue saturation luminosity, and you can turn the saturation all the way down and that will remove the color from the image so that you can see it in stark black and white. So we can see that, yeah, there's definitely some white spaces here and there's definitely some black spots. Everything else is going to be this kind of like granular shade of gray, right? So like we can see his hair is not 100% black all the time. And we can see like the light from the stage is coming off his lapel, but it's also shining a bit off of his ear and the side of his face. And it's kind of rim lighting from the back. And there's kind of some stuff coming up from the top. And all of these, uh, these, these are relationships of value, right? Everything exists on a scale from pure black to pure white. Uh, and when... When you draw out that uh, that scale into tons of shades of gray, uh, that's that's value, and so value is like 95% of what the human eye is trained to see. We're trained to to see the differences between like white and black, and we can do that pretty darn well, uh, you know. And then and then color is just a, an extra 5% splash on top of all of this. Uh, pure black and white information, this this pure uh, light and shadow information, pure information of of some form or another. But yeah, and so like you can you can see that like uh, there w there's the combination of like every every single thing here in this photograph, right? You're wanting to reproduce these in drawings. Um, but you want to make sure that you work on them on perception. And so like, okay, say you want to work on specifically edges. Okay, we've got an edge here. Tracing up his lapel. We've got an edge. We've got, let's let's just do his entire contour. We've got kind of the fuzzy edge of his hair, right? And we come back down the other side and down his lapel, and we could trace kind of like a, a silhouette. And then we can look at the inner edges, inner lapel. There's going to be, we can even notice that there's an edge of light and shadow, right? So like, even right here, we've got an extreme contrast of like super white and super black right here in just one part of the image. There's a line here, kind of. And we just kind of look at the way the line flows. And if we're looking for a relationship of a line to another line, we can do something like um, siding. You know that thing where you'll see like artists sticking out a pencil in front of them and they'll shift their thumb up and down? That's siding. That's a, that's a real life drawing thing. And you can do it in um, digital drawing too. In fact, you could probably do it if you had like a... If you, if you wanted to be super nitpicky about it, I could create like a new layer and say like... Okay, I'm going to measure everything in lapel corners. <laughs> I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to 
flip it and move it and say like, okay, Neil deGrasse Tyson's face is approximately so many instances of this <laughs> lapel length up, right? That's another relationship that I could that I could decide. It uh, that that gets kind of like uh, it, it it can break down and get kind of silly at that point. But like the 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 core principle is that you you recognize that like this thing is different than the other thing. How is that different in the simplest in the simplest terms, or how do they relate in the simplest terms? But yeah, uh, any questions so far? Feel free to unmute or just chat in the uh, the the stream chat. Okay. No questions. All right then. I hope these tips and tricks are, are useful to you guys. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to hear uh, more about? Um, I could talk more about. Gestalt and, and composition. So, like, and we can talk Gestalt and composition on like any of these things, right? Um, if we're talking about the the composition of this thing, the um, so composition, uh, another word that it you can you can kind of tie that back into relationships, because a composition is about how the entire piece. Uh, relates to itself and the outside world. So like here the the composition is symmetrical. We can flip one side and it becomes the other side, right? Uh, or in this one, Neil's picture here, the composition, everything is centered, right? The most important thing about this image is the man's face, is Neil's face here. And everything else kind of gets fuzzy or fades out the super focus of this you know particular image and you could make it a super focus of a drawing if you wanted uh is to is is his face by focusing on his face uh and since everything is like centered and bam like we can tell something's really important and there's a lot of life in this face you know he's like starting to smile because he's telling a joke about black holes or something like that because that's neil degrasse tyson if we looked at a composition of something like the hands, for example. Again, this is kind of like big, bold, centered. Uh, I could bring up an example of, of this is, that is not that way, which is why I brought in this image. Here we've got an old you know, manuscript of some sort. I don't know where exactly it came from. It's another one of these like Google search images that I did for like a ancient century public domain dragons or something like that right uh, again we've got kind of like a, a central a big central composition here but we've also got some interest in this text whatever it is it probably reads this way but yeah and we can see that like oh actually this is a part of this is just one part of a bigger work right we've got a book seam here and so this is going to be placed on like one side of a one side of a page or something like that. Um, but yeah, yeah. All right, cool. No questions. Is that is that no questions? Because you have so many questions, you don't know which to choose. Because <laughs> because this is this is kind of like drinking from a fire hose sometimes. <laughs> If if you come up with like specific like uh, questions or anything like that, again, you feel free to unmute or or anything like that. But yeah, so these are these are perceptual. Uh, those are the basic. Those are the five basic perceptual skills. And if you master these perceptual skills, if you master lines and edges. Uh, various the various types of lines and edges the the pure contours the the stark contrasts of like black and white um, in the in the lines and edges and the same with the spaces uh, if you know exactly what the shape of a thing is 
uh, and the relationships, the relationships of the lines and edges to each other, of the spaces that the lines and edges make to each other, of the, uh, the relationships even of the light and shadow, the light and shadow, um, everything, everything kind of ties back and falls back on, on the other spaces, right? Sometimes lines and edges can indicate where light and shadow is. Uh, sometimes uh, the, the, the spaces, sometimes the light and shadows are super stark, like we saw with, in, uh, in Neil deGrasse Tyson's lapel, and they break down into kind of black and white spaces, right? Uh, and the and the relationships, how how everything ties together, like how far apart things are from each other, uh, how tall is something, how wide is something, what angle is that line going from, all of those relate back to each other. And again, yeah, uh, Gestalt and composition, things arise from that. I hope I'm not repeating myself too much, but this this really is like. These, these really are the core basics. Everything that you can learn about drawing ties back into these things. Like anatomy, for example. Memorizing anatomy is memorizing relationships. Where, where bones and muscles are in relationship to each other, that's basically a, a, a relationship. And you can learn that on, on a creative level, and you can learn that on a logical level, too. Uh, same with light and shadow, right? I kind of lost that train of thought. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, but yeah, they all they all relate uh, to each other, and they kind of intertwine upon each other. Uh, right. I was talking about um, anything that you wanted to to learn in drawing. So, in anatomy, is a relationships thing. Uh, perspective is kind of a relationships thing. Perspective when it comes to like lines and edges. Like if I bring about bring us back to the the city image here, all of these lines intersect at angles to each other, right? And we can have big let me zoom in a bit. And we can have like big fat wide angles and we can have really skinny angles. That's a relationship that you can notice. That doesn't necessarily need uh, a ruler to capture. It's probably most effectively captured with a ruler, but you don't necessarily need it to just observe that, like, okay, this angle is fatter than than this angle, and everything is pointing in a similar direction as long as the, the lines are parallel. You know, you can learn stuff about perspective merely through observation. You don't necessarily have to have to study books on it. Although I do recommend studying books on it, but different people learn different ways. So, learn your way, whatever it is. Learn your way. So, anatomy, perspective, light and shadow. Again, light and shadow can be can be brought back to, to spaces and lines and edges. One, one thing where light and shadow will be different is that there will be gradual uh, gradients across things, right? So we've got uh, we've got kind of a fade as his uh, on the on the hair as we come in from the rim lighting, things gradually get grayer and grayer until they're a very dark gray here, and kind of same on like we can look at the various like uh, kind of semi shapes they're they're fuzzy shapes you know they're they're shapes that that fade and blend into each other. Right? So here on the face, we've got kind of like a dark spot where like the the dome of the cranium curls back in and then before the brow juts back out and it catches more light and it becomes lighter. But yeah, um, same same with any like any particular area of the face, you know, just uh, just look at these things, study these things. Um, eventually it will be it will become apparent to you like the more faces that you study like you can you can even come have a kind of transcendental breakthrough right like and say like oh my god everything is so beautiful and you don't necessarily have to be on drugs or anything art is its own drug <laughs> but yeah um i'm going to build upon these basic perceptual skills there are some additional 
skills since you've stuck with me for so long. So these are the five basic perceptual skills, right? And so there are two and only two additional skills. Let me write this down. Additional skills. So number six, drawing from memory. That's fairly straightforward. You look at something, you try and uh, keep it in your mind as best you can, and you come back to the canvas and try to capture it on the canvas from your memory. Or, number seven, this will be super exciting for you, drawing from imagination. Drawing from memory, drawing from imagination. So like if you're drawing something from memory, you've memorized it, right? Uh, and you're, you're trying to recapture it on, on the surface of something. However, if you're drawing from imagination, whatever you're, you're imagining uh, will have uh, these, these aspects to it, right? If you're imagining that you want to draw an anthro unicorn, well, that anthro unicorn is going to have a, a contour shape of some, of some type, right? So that needs to be made with lines of some type, right? And maybe it's got a mane or something, you know? And this is going to be one goofy looking unicorn, but like, it's going to have lines, right? And there's going to be spaces. There's a big space here for the head. There's a space here for the horns, for the horn. There's a space here for the ear. You know, and the next thing you know, we've drawn an awesome unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, good. Yeah, you remember doing stuff like this in high school, mostly review. That's good. That's good. Yeah, no, because this this is a very basic review, right? It's always good to go back to the basics, the fundamentals. And this is from, like, a perceptual end, right? So you don't necessarily need any additional artistic books. And in fact, uh, the artistic books, many of them that are out there, are focusing on these additional skills, right? They're not focusing on these core skills, necessarily. They're saying like, oh, hey, you wanted to draw this really cool, like, fantasy landscape or something like that, that's imagination, right? Or like, say, oh, hey, you wanted to draw these super fancy cars or something, right? That, that would be from memory. You know, you look at the, you look at the image, you refer to it, you try and draw it from memory. And those, those are, those are two additional skills, which are great, but if you don't have these core five skills, you're going to struggle with everything in, in the six and seven area. So, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad there are not many questions. Uh, let's see here. So, drawing from memory, drawing from imagination. <laughs> and just have fun. No, never forget to have fun. Like... These are perceptual skills. They don't mean anything if you're not having fun. Have fun. Because drawing is awesome. And if you want to draw stuff from your imagination like furries, you're going to need to have a lot of fun. Uh, and especially especially if you want to learn some of these more like uh, complex and nuanced things, the basic perceptual skills of drawing. Like it's called a, It's called a global skill... Um, because it's it's a lot of different things that are practiced together all at the same time. Like, I don't know if all of you are driving age, but driving is a global skill, right? Because it's not just one... Because it's, it's just one thing to turn a steering wheel. It's just one thing to, to shift a gear if you're, if you're going that route with the manual transmission. 
It's just a thing to push a pedal up and down. It's just a thing to look at everything at the same time. But driving is all of those things put together, right? And it's the same for draw drawing here. Drawing is all of these things put together, right? A good drawing has a, has a sense for every single one of these things. So, uh, you know, I would, I would suggest uh, taking notes. I would suggest, you know, like, um, the next time you see a picture that just wows you, right? Come back to a list like this. You know, if you need to ask me for it, I'll, I'll provide it ha again happily. But like, you know, come back to this list and look at every single item in these, in, uh, and, and look at it from the frame of every single one of these items. Like, what do the lines and edges look like? What do the spaces look like? And you can kind of break down uh, that that drawing that is wowing you so much, and you can kind of start to figure out uh, how it's working. You know, um, maybe all of the lines and edges are super crisp, or maybe they're not. Maybe they're kind of fuzzy. You know, all of these things. Cool. Uh, again, any questions? Uh, any anything that you'd like me to talk more about? What are some ways you would go about practicing these skills? Right. Um. So, like I um, like I said earlier, um, find 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 pictures, right? Find stuff to look at if you're if you're focusing on building perceptual skills like go out there and really look at the world you know don't don't um take time take time to analyze someone's uh someone's face or take time to analyze whatever plants are growing in you know a nearby park or a front yard if you have one or you know i don't know what kind of plants are growing from the concrete you know, between the between the things. If you take time and analyze, you know, just any, any small little thing, you can start to find all of these things in it, right? If you take a sketchbook with you outside or something like that on a, on a better day than this, it's raining here where I am, but, um, yeah, just go out and yeah, and yeah, and you look in the world and, and, um, try to focus in on something. Like one of the, one of the tools that um, that artists use uh, is called a viewfinder. It's literally just a square of of uh, stock paper or or cardboard or something like that. Use the viewfinder to focus your uh, your attention on a particular area, you know, right, or on a particular thing. And you can say like, okay, brain, I'm only looking at the stuff in the frame, and it will start ignoring everything else so that you can pay more attention to to the stuff inside of it. So that's, yeah, I mean, um, gosh, you know, and, and like when it comes down to it, drawing is basically all the same thing, right? Uh, drawing's not all that different from writing. All I'm doing when I'm drawing is I'm dragging a pencil, or in this case, a stylus across a screen, a screen. I'm dragging a pencil across paper, right? I do the same thing when I write my name. <laughs> Real name reveal, if you caught that. Anyway, uh, I do the same thing when I write down these 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 things. You know, like I'm I'm dragging a pencil across paper. The difference is, I'm capturing symbols when I'm writing. Right? Each of these lines doesn't necessarily mean anything by itself. It's only the the abstract meaning of these things in a collection that gives it its meaning, right? So, like, I can read the, the words, lines, lines and edges. That's a collection of symbols. When you're drawing stuff from real life, you're collecting not symbols, but images. Like, what things actually look like, right? What are the shapes of the shadows cast by the head of a horse? You know, what are... How do things blend up or down? What kind of details are there in this thing that I'm not necessarily recognizing? What are the things that would 
take this from like oh yeah it's just an image to like whoa this is something special actually a number of things right there are all sorts of stuff out there so like it's it's kind of hard like I'm not I'm not with you so I can't necessarily teach you how to how to see but I can say you know go out there you know look at look at stuff like um heck you know you're you guys are probably in in rooms where there's stuff all around you right now pick something up and just study it for a bit you know like try to try to look at it so much that part of you gets bored with it right and as like one part of you gets bored another part let another part of your brain kind of light up and say like oh that's interesting i never noticed that about this super glue bottle you know, because that's what's next to me, or you know, like uh, I never noticed this about this, uh, uh, you know, uh, cable or or something. You know, like there's stuff around you, right? Pick something up. Um, what materials that lack defined edges? Where do you focus when sketching lines? Okay, so when it comes to stuff that's like fluid and moving a lot, uh, real life is going to be pretty hard. Um, so in that in that instance, definitely study from photos. So like study photos of clouds, study photos of waves. Um, your your perception will work better when when time is is frozen, in a sense. Especially if you're trying to replicate it in a drawing, right? If you're trying to to draw the ocean uh, on plain air, so to speak, uh, some people can do that really well. Um, not because they've you know successfully taken a picture in their mind and they're tracing that that picture so to speak but they're looking at how waves act or how clouds act um, from real life and they have likely studied pictures too but that's a great resource that you have at your fingertips for studying things that are that are more fluid like like clouds and and the waves of ocean water or you know uh, clothes blowing in the wind or something like that does that make sense? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and like, uh, there's there's so much just to look at, you know. Like, I'm 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 here basically in a in a closet and I can see like clothes all around me and I can look at each and every single one of these things and if I turn on my artist brain I can be like you know that's really neat the way that like lights and shadows are bouncing off the the corners there from the from the light source or from the monitor or from the cracks in the door or something like that the more you look at stuff, the more you kind of like see things. <laughs> and so that's that's kind of like that kind of speaks to the core journey of what being an artist is, right? Being an artist is about learning to to see things, right? Because once you see things, replicating them is just a matter of like dragging your pencil across paper or dragging your stylus across a, a screen or a graphics tablet or something like that. You know, and there's there are only so many ways that you can do that. You know, you can you can do that so quickly or with so much pressure or with uh, so many different colors. You know, so there's there's like tons of ways to do that. But like in the end, you're you're dragging one thing against another. You're you're you know picking up a rock to to mark prehistoric uh, drawings on a cave or something like that. If you're a caveman, you know. But yeah. Go out there. Look at the world. This is just a super, you know, uh, breakdown of, uh, of a book. Again, it's uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, uh, Betty Edwards. It's a fantastic basic drawing book. This is, this is Drawing 101, and um, it, it includes exercises such as, like, drawing self-portraits, you know, because, like, drawing from life, I recommend drawing from life. Learn how to draw from life, right? Um, because that will really help inform 
your imagination. When you want to create these anthropomorphic creatures and so forth, you're going to need some real-life reference to base that off of. So go out there, find something really neat. You know, like, the, the world is not full of cartoon animals, unfortunately. But, you know, you, you, if you place them there in your imagination, and you decide to capture, you know, like, the landscapes around them, those landscapes are going to be inspired from what you've studied in real life. So, yeah. All right. Um, I'm probably thoroughly out of ideas by this point, <laughs> as far as covering this stuff goes. Uh, yeah, any other questions? Those are great questions, guys, by the way. Fantastic questions. I want to make sure that I'm addressing, like, um, did I, did I get your... Uh, your your question. Did I answer the question to your satisfaction, Sergeant? I'm not going to repeat that name. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. good. <laughs> Demonetized. I'm not monetizing my YouTube videos, actually, so you'll never see ads on them. But still, nonetheless... Oh, my YouTube, you can find it uh, by uh, in, in the Discord. You can click my uh, name. Uh, or you can click... Uh, let's see here. Will that bring me up? Yeah, if you click on my name, you can bring up my profile. My profile has uh, my YouTube linked to it. And I'll also... Uh, I always throw up the links to the YouTube videos in this chat. In this chat. Stream chat one. I always throw the links here. So if you're ever looking for a link, I can point you to it here. So I'll be I'll be putting up the link in this chat afterwards. Oh, okay. New question. possible to study other art similarly to how you're saying to study real life? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, it's possible. Um, you just have to remember that when you're studying art, you're you're absorbing the the artist in a way, right? So like be be careful who you study very very carefully there because you absorb them and you absorb like their strengths, but you also can absorb their weaknesses. So like when you're when you're studying from from real life that's you know that's real life it it goes on whether you want it to or not you know right but uh, a picture from another artist is is an expression that they themselves have put down so like i said it's it's totally okay to study different art this way just realize that if you're trying to replicate uh one of your idols or something like that that you're absorbing something from them so you know uh buyer beware you know because you might you might get halfway through replicating an image and say like you know what now that i've noticed all these things about this image i'm not so sure i like it anymore because that's happened to me a couple times um and i still i still like those artists so to speak but i don't like certain things that they do oh yeah oh yeah look at tons of people yeah 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 i mean like Who's the single artist that you're going to study, right? Like, if you have to choose one, like, who do you choose? <laughs> like, there are tons of great people to choose from. Like, if you went only after, like, Leonardo da Vinci or something like that, excellent choice. But, uh, you know, Leo Leo had very uh, very diverse interests, and it's going to be a super interesting person to, to try to copy. Um, but, you know, so does uh, other, other great furry artists. <laughs> But yeah, no, look at multiple. Find multiple people that you like. And, uh, you know, make make use of... Uh, make use of artists, too. Because artists always have inspirations that they can point back to. Uh, the, the people that informed their style or impressed their style the most. Like, for me personally, my style is very uh, anime-manga type 
it's it's very I had a, I had a deep love of Dragon Ball Z as a kid. <laughs> and so I traced a lot of Akira Toriyama uh pictures and and manga when I was first learning to draw. Uh and you know, it kind of it set it it had an effect on me, a strong effect. And sometimes there it sometimes it's an effect that I wish my art didn't have. <laughs> So yeah, that goes back to your question about like studying other artists. You know, just just beware that whenever you're tracing someone else and learning deeply from someone else that you're absorbing a bit of them. So just be on guard, you know, because you don't necessarily want to absorb everything that another artist is putting out. Is that a fair rant? Does that answer your question, Astral? Cool. Well, with that, I think this stream has gone on long enough. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, again, I'll place uh, a link for Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain in the description of the YouTube video. And I'll paste it up in the chat here, too, for you guys here in a sec, uh, in case you're interested in getting it, because it's an amazing uh, drawing textbook, so to speak. If you follow the exercises and, and read and absorb the text, it'll improve your basic drawing skill by a lot. Uh, to our YouTube viewers, thank you for watching me. Um, I hope you have fun with whatever you're, you're drawing. So come back to these five basics anytime. Um, yeah, uh, like and subscribe if you are so inclined. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to end the recording. Ciao!